بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله in the name of Allah peace and blessings be upon the beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم had to migrate from Mecca the situation in Mecca was terrible his life was under threat the Meccans decided to sit in their assembly to deal with the problem of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had misguided many of their youth he had caused rebellion and revolt in Mecca the situation was critical for them if they were to remain in power and be as influential as they had been they needed to get rid of Muhammad so they came together all the leaders of the different tribes and they said we are going to kill Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so on this night they selected one of their male children and from all the different tribes a collective assassination attempt on the prophet was going to happen tonight and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam being guided by allah he knew that the migration was imminent and he had already taken precaution and started to prepare for this migration almost two and a half months before the actual night What happened two and a half months before was that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked Abu Bakr, his closest companion and his best friend, to buy two camels in secret. Nobody is to know. Just you and me, O oh Abu Bakr. And one other thing, Abu Bakr, you have to feed these camels so and overfeed them so that they're ready for an arduous long journey. So Abu Bakr radhiyallahu anhu does exactly as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam instructs him. He buys the camel, he hides them away, and he feeds them, building up their energy, building up their hump so that they're prepared for a long journey. This is two and a half months before the night that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has to migrate. And even before then, Abu Bakr seeing that the other companions are migrating and that the number of Muslims in Mecca is dwindling he comes up to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he says messenger of Allah I have intended to make the migration and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says oh Abu Bakr not yet don't go yet perchance Allah will choose a good companion for you Abu Bakr says I was so happy that day because I realized that Allah may have chosen me to accompany my beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam on this journey so Abu Bakr is happy he's ready Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is already making preparation by buying these camels feeding them he's also been taught by Allah to make a dua the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam rabbi adkhilni mudkhala sidqan wa akhrijni mudkhala sidqan wa ja'alli min ladunka sultanan nasira that was the dua that Allah taught the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this dua is oh Allah enable me to leave in security and to arrive in security and give me from you a authority so rasulullah is making a dua allah help me to leave makkah in peace and in security and help me to arrive in medina in peace and security and give me that power and authority so that i can do good for humanity and mankind so these are the preparations that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is making on the night that he is to make the hijra he calls his um Uh, nephew Abu Ta um, the son of Abu Talib Ali ibn Abu Talib and he says Ali I have been asked by Allah to make migration tonight and I know that the Quraysh are going to try and kill me can you lay in my bed as a kind of you know as a, a strategy for me to escape can you lay in my bed but that's not all Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says Ali when I am safe and I have left please return everything that I have kept safe for the Quraysh leaders because you know my dear brothers and sisters that the prophet was al amin and as sadiq he was the truthful and the honest one and despite the enmity that the quraishi leaders had towards the prophet they knew he was trustworthy they knew he was honest they knew that their possession their wealth would be safe with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so they left their possessions with him despite they being his arch enemy and wanting to kill him and rasulullah was so upright and was so just that he wanted to return 
the, the property of the people that trusted him. And so he instructed Ali that once I am safe, you return all of those things. So Ali is laying in the bed of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's only 22 years old, 23 years old, a young man, that courageous, ready to sacrifice potentially his own life for the sake of the mission and the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah looks outside his house and he can see that the enemies are, you know, uh, in, in their key positions around the house, ready to just attack and to kill him uh, together collectively. And he makes a dua, he recites Surah Yaseen, and through the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, each and every enemy falls into slumber. Holding onto their sword, they just fall into deep sleep. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though all of the mighty strong men of Mecca were ready to kill him, is able to walk out of his house, walk past these men in a peaceful, in a safe and dignified manner to the house of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. When he arrives at the house of Abu Bakr, um, he knocks on the door and then he opens it and he sees Abu Bakr is there standing in front of him ready to go. Ya Rasulullah, I've been ready. I have not slept all night. I haven't, that I'm ready to leave right now. And so um, Abu Bakr's daughter Asma has packed some food and some nourishment for the journey for her, her father and the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they need to tie this bag onto uh, the, the camel and they don't have a belt. So what Asma radiallahu anha does is that she takes off her belt, she was wearing a belt and she cuts it into uh, two pieces and with one piece she ties her clothing again and with the other piece she uses it to tie the bag the food bag onto the camel and she's given the appetite of the woman with the two belts because of that sacrifice and the action she performed just there and so Abu Bakr and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they, they, they travel at night when everybody else is asleep and they come to the edge of Medina and with Abu Bakr is his shepherd his shepherd uh, is with him and another man called Abdullah ibn Arqat Abdullah ibn Arqat, by the way, is a non-Muslim and he is part of this plan to migrate to Medina with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they, um, at the edge of Makkah, the Prophet looks back to Makkah, his place of birth, the, the, the land that he loves so much, the place that has the Kaaba. And he says, Oh Allah, if it wasn't for the enemies and if it wasn't the fact that they were they are wanting to kill me now. I would never leave this blessed land. I would never leave my beloved Makkah. And he sheds a tear because this is his home. This is his birthplace. This is where he, he, this is the only place that he knows. And he has to leave for the sake of Allah and for the sake of the religion. So the four of them, they travel south. Actually, Medina is north of Mecca. They travel south. Why? Because it's a divergency. It's, it's a strategy so that people won't be able to capture them so easily. So they're traveling south. Um, the shepherd of Abu Bakr, he has his sheep with him. So as they're traveling, the sheep is walking behind the camels so that the footprints of the camels are covered by the sheep. And they're heading towards Mount Thor. And they get to Mount Thor and this is where they find the cave. But even before that, subhanAllah, what, what is so important is to just, just stop a second and two and speak about the guide. So you have the shepherd of, um, of Abu Bakr whose sheep are used to like remove any trace of the camel's footprints as they're walking towards, uh, traveling towards Mount Thor. But you have Abdullah ibn Arat who is a non-Muslim. What's his role in this whole uh, hijrah? His role is he is an expert traveler. He know, knows how to get to different places through various different routes. He is like a modern day satnav. You know, he knows how to get you to a place quickest, um, not avoiding any dangerous areas, traffic, all of that thing. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he hired the expert navigator, traveler, uh, you know, to take him to Medina in the best possible and the safest possible way. And that's his role. The Prophet trusted a non-Muslim. 
This is very important that really faith doesn't matter. What matters is expertise. What matters is knowledge. What matters is how can people benefit you? Are they on the same page as you in terms of the objectives that you have? If they are, their faith is secondary. It's not important. And this is a lesson from the, the, the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They arrive there they and they go into the, into the cave. It's now um, early morning. And the Qurayshi leaders, they wake up hoping and believing that Muhammad has been killed by their brave sons. They realize that Muhammad hasn't been killed. In fact, he has escaped. How do they realize? When they come and see that their children are asleep, they wake them up. They, they break into the house of the Prophet wasallam and are about to stick a dagger or two into the, the chest of the Prophet. And they see that it's Ali ibn Abu Talib. And so they don't kill Ali. And Ali radiallahu anhu, he says, look, he told me to return all your possessions and all your wealth and all your important uh, things that you left with him. They are enraged. And what they do is they say, look, we need to kill Muhammad. I, we are going to reward the person who captures him dead or alive with a hundred red camels, the most expensive commodity that they had. A hundred red camels is like a hundred Ferraris or Lamborghinis of our time. Lots and lots of wealth is being uh, offered to the one who catches Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So all the men who are able to travel, who are able to kind of, um, you know, uh, look for Muhammad, they go out looking for Muhammad because of the ransom that's offered on his head. Okay, so that's what's happening. So now they're looking. And in fact, one person, he's a, he, he finds some camel droppings. And he looks at the camel droppings and he says, ah, these camels are, are, are camels that have been overfed. He's able to tell this through the camel droppings. And he says, it must be the, the camel of Muhammad. And so he is led, being led in the right direction. And they, they, they've kind of found a trail for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Bakr is in the cave with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in the cave uh, as well. And he is calm. He is absolutely unworried, unfazed, whereas Abu Bakr is tense. And, Abu, and Rasulullah looks at Abu Bakr and says, Ya Abu Bakr, what's up? What's the matter? Why are you so tense and anxious? He says, Ya Rasulullah, if they find us, if they find us, we will be finished, we will be over. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Abu Bakr, Oh Abu Bakr, what do you say about two people who Allah is the third companion amongst them. If Allah is with you, O oh Abu Bakr, what have you got to worry about? What have you got to fear about? So Rasulullah is calm and his calmness and his collectivity and his peace is then passed on to, Rasulullah, to Abu Bakr because Abu Bakr is taught an important lesson that if you have Allah on your side, don't worry, keep to the plan. Do what you've been asked to do with complete conviction that Allah's got you. He's protecting you. Because at that moment, Abu Bakr could see the foot, the feet of the Quraysh. They had found Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they had come to the mouth of the cave. Had they looked down, they would have seen the Prophet and Abu Bakr. But they didn't look down. They, they, were, they were talking amongst themselves and they turned around and they walked away. Why? Because it's, it's in, the, in the narrations that the mouth of the cave had a complete untouched cobweb. A spider had woven a, a web across the mouth of the cave. And you can't weave a web like that within, in, in the space of an hour or two. It takes a long time. And so the Meccans thought there's no way anybody's in that cave because a spider would not have been able to uh, finish that cobweb in the space of time. So Muhammad and Abu Bakr can't be there. We need to go and look for him elsewhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them. And this is the Quranic verse. They plan and Allah plans and Allah is the best of planners. The people of Tafsir, they say that that verse was revealed around this time in relation to the hijra of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It took 14 days for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for Abu Bakr to reach Al-Quba, Al which is on the outskirts of Madinatul Munawwara. And Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he says that on the day that the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived and blessed us with his, uh, with his appearance in Madinatul Munawwara, that day was the brightest, 
most luminous, most wonderful, most blessed day that I have ever experienced, that I have ever known. Why? Because of the arrival of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This journey of the Prophet, so many beautiful lessons, so many wisdoms, but the main one I want to leave you with is that the Prophet never left anything to chance. The Prophet wasn't a haphazard person. He wasn't a person who was disorganized. He wasn't a person who didn't know what he was doing. No, he had a strategy. He had a plan. He looked at that plan. He revised that plan. He knew the risks. He knew what to do to mitigate the risk. He was a man with a mission and he took this mission the most serious way possible and he did everything in his capacity and his power to fulfill that mission to the best of his ability and then and only then did he rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for us brothers and sisters, we need to do things in the best manner, in the best manner, in the best way possible, learning from experts, learning from knowledgeable people and doing it in the best possible way, executing our actions in the best possible way and then rely on Allah so that Allah will bless us and give us victory like he did to Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr when they managed to survive that very deadly journey to uh, Mecca, to, from Mecca to Medina. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq, inshallah, to learn from the beautiful seerah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers and sisters, remember, this Ramadan, giving is believing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.